All right, welcome Algebra 1B students to your first screencast lecture with Mr. Freitag. We are starting Chapter 7 today. And we're going to look at the rules for zero and negative exponents. You can find this section on page 418. Please open there with me in your textbooks now. And we're going to start by just reviewing how exponents actually work. Okay? Here's our three warm-up problems. What's 3 to the 3rd, what's 3 to the 2nd, and what's 3 to the 1st? Hopefully, it's review for you that 3 to the 3rd power is 3 times 3 times 3, right? 3 threes multiplied together, that equals 27. 3 to the 2nd power, then, is just 2 threes multiplied together. 3 times 3, that equals 9. And 3 to the 1st power is just 1 3. So that obviously equals 3. 3 to the 3rd power equals 27. 3 to the 2nd power equals 9. And 3 to the 1st power equals 3. Hopefully, that's a review for you. There's our three answers right there. Okay. Our first job of the day is to decide what is the pattern that we see happening as we decrease the exponent by 1 as I go from 3 to the 3rd, down to 3 to the 2nd, 3 to the 2nd, down to 3 to the 1st. What happens to my numbers over there? Hopefully, uh, you can see, to go from 27 to 9 to 3, we are dividing each of those numbers by 3. You can find that explanation under the essential understanding paragraph on page 418. But what the book tells you, and what I hope that you can see here, is that as we decrease the exponent by 1, we are dividing, or we divide the number by 3. Okay? So now, we're going to continue that pattern to an exponent of 0 and to an exponent of negative 1. So, what is 3 to the 0 power? Well, 3 to the 0 power is just one more decrease of our exponent from 3 to the 1st. Back up to our pattern again at the top of the screen. So if we're decreasing our exponent by 1, again, we need to divide our number by 3. Well, 3 to the 1st was 3, so 3 divided by 3 equals 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So what's 3 to the 0 power? It's 1. To go one step further, we need to divide by 3 again. So 3 to the negative 1, if we decrease one more time, what is 1 divided by 3 again? Well, that's 1 over 3, or 1 third. Okay. Now, I will tell you that 3 to the negative 2 power is 1 over 3 to the 2 power, and hopefully now you can start seeing this pattern. That's a 3 to the first power right there. Okay? Negative exponents end up in the bottom of a fraction with a positive exponent there instead. Okay? Let's take a look at this rule that your book gives you. There at the bottom of page 418. First, for 0 as an exponent. Much easier rule than the second one. For every non-zero number. For every number that you have except zero, if you raise it to the zero power, your answer is one. So, four to the zero power equals one. Negative three to the zero power equals one. 5.14 to the zero power equals one. 112 to the zero power equals one. Negative 73 to the zero power equals one. Okay? So anything to the zero power is going to equal one. That's a rule that should be in your notes, right? Take note, please, on that and write down those examples as well. The second rule is for negative exponents. It's an important rule, but it's one that may not uh, make total sense to you right now. For any number that you have and any negative exponent that you have, Raising a number to a negative exponent is just like making a fraction 
where one is on the top and that number with the same exponent, but positive this time, is on the bottom or in the denominator of the fraction. So a to the negative n equals one over a to the n. What does that look like in some real number examples? Well, here's one here. Seven to the negative three power equals one over seven to the positive three power, okay? Make sure that's also in your notes. For every number a, a to the negative n equals one over a to the n. And these examples are especially important for that rule because it helps you make sense of them. Just as a side note, zero is the exception to both of these rules. So zero to the zero does not exist, and zero can't have negative exponents. It's not allowed to. Zero is the exception to these rules, okay? If either of those rules don't make sense to you, please make a note to ask me a question in class tomorrow while you're working on your problem set. Speaking of that problem set, we're going to look at the kind of problems you're going to have to do in that problem set here in problem one. Okay? All I'm going to ask you to do is add in, excuse me, all I'm going to ask you to do tomorrow is simplify or evaluate some of these expressions where we see negative exponents and zero as an exponent. Tomorrow, in our uh, screencast, we will add some variables, we'll add some x's and some y's, make it algebraic. Uh, but for now, we're just going to deal with problem one, which you can find now almost in the middle of page 419. We're going to deal with letter B first because that is way easier. As soon as you see a zero in your exponent right there, negative 3.6 to the zero power, you should know immediately that your answer is 1. You see a number to the zero power, your answer is 1. Just so we're clear down here, letter B in the check it, negative 5 to the zero power, also 1. That equals 1. It always, always, always equals 1. I can't stress that enough. Now, negative exponents are not quite as easy as that. We're actually going to have to use that rule uh, pretty carefully when we evaluate or simplify an expression like we see in letter A, 9 to the negative 2 power. Now, our rule says that 9 to the negative 2 power is the same as 1 on the top of a fraction and 9 to the positive 2 power in the bottom. So 9 to the negative 2 equals 1 over 9 to the positive 2. Okay. Hopefully we know that 9 to the positive 2 is just equal to 9 times 9, which is equal to 81. So instead of saying 1 over 9 to the 2, they just said 1 over 81. There's their final answer. Okay. Now, what I would like you to do now is take a look here at letter A, letter C, letter D, and letter E. Make sure that you understand how each of those work. Use a calculator if you need to, but please master those four example problems before you get to class tomorrow or before you start working on your practice problem set. If you don't understand how to do any of those three, uh, excuse me, four problems, Please make a note to ask me that in class tomorrow. So your problem set you will get uh, in class tomorrow will be from pages 421, uh, probably just page 421. Uh, and you will have class time to work on that tomorrow and to make sure that you have mastered these two rules. That's all for now. I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a wonderful night.